Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so that potential buyers can learn more about the business and the seller to help them make an informed buying decision. If you would like to learn more about this business, including details like what type of business it is, how much revenue and profit it makes, and all of the assets included with the business, simply visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for this business's listing number, which you can find in the video thumbnail and in the description. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. So without further ado, let's get into this interview. First up, let's learn a little bit about you. Can you tell us about your background in building and running online businesses? Sure. So I've led four online companies. I started a few years ago running an online services company and then wanted to get into the e-commerce space. So I acquired this one and one other and was running those for a bit. And then earlier this year, formed a startup that I've really been working on. It's an online services company as well. I've really been working on full throttle since about March. And it continues to need my full attention. And this one is continuing to not get the attention it deserves to really give it the explosive growth it's ready for. So I'm trying to turn it over to someone who's ready to take it as I focus on my other one. These are my day jobs. I'm also a volunteer firefighter. So I spent a decent portion of my time firefighting, responding to 911 calls on everything from fires to car crashes to mountain and water rescues. And I love that and love running businesses. Why are you selling the business now instead of keeping it and growing it further? The short answer is I just don't have capacity to run it right now. And it's in a really great spot to grow. So I'm hoping to hand it over to someone who does. It's also it's a somewhat seasonal business with sort of late spring through the summer to early fall, the busiest time. So we're entering a slower season where someone could put in the work in the next few months to really be primed to absolutely crush it in 2025 to give this thing explosive growth. I don't have the time to be that person for the next few months. And frankly, I've really neglected it for the last three months, but neglected it you know, in general for the last six or seven. So I'm hoping to find someone who's excited to take it over and scale it because I think it's got a ton of potential to really grow. And I'd love to see someone who has the time to be able to do that. Can you describe the amount and the type of work that you do on this business to maintain it? I'm currently spending about 15 minutes per day on it and not every day. So it's probably works out to about hour and a half a week. And I'm doing two things. I'm responding to incoming from customers or potential customers. So if someone emails or texts us and asks a question that help make a sale, I respond to it or a existing customer has a question, I respond to it. And then I'm fulfilling orders, which takes a minute or two to just send in an order that came over off to the person who's going to fulfill it, either the brand or our 3PL. And that's all I've been doing for the past three months as I've been really neglecting the store. From about March or April through July, I spent more like 30 minutes per day. So about double what I'm doing now. Worked out to probably two to three hours per week doing the same two things. And then also answering and responding to incoming phone calls. So we haven't been answering the phone for the last three months and keeping the live chat on the website, which always gets a lot of good leads. And so that hasn't even been turned on for the past three months. But I was doing that in Q2 of this year. And that got me up to probably about half an hour of work a day spread over the course of the day. Before March, when I started the new company, I was spending about two to three hours per day on the company. So, you know, more like 10 to 15 hours per week. And that would include things like adding new products when our brands introduce them to updating products with new pictures and videos, 
to adding new SEO based pages to increase our incoming traffic, working on developing our own products. And all of that work, maybe with the exception of some of the developing of our own product, but everything else could have been done by a VA. I didn't because I wanted to be immersed in the business as I was learning it and working on it. But a new buyer could really get this thing primed to grow considerably in 2025 by doing that same 10 to 15 hours a week. And they wouldn't even have to do almost all of it. I would say they could spend an hour a week on it and give the rest to a VA or someone on their team, whomever. So I think it requires more work than I'm currently putting into it of about 15 minutes a day, but not that much more and doesn't have to be by the buyer. So if you were to keep this business, what are some of the ways you were trying to grow it? If I were keeping the business and I wanted to help it grow, the first thing I would do, I'd immediately just start focusing on the things that have worked for us in the past that I've been neglecting over the past six months. So I would turn the live chat back on the website and you might get like two to five chats a day, but those are pretty darn good leads that responding to them quickly often leads to sales and takes up very little time. I would respond to incoming voicemails and phone calls so that we're getting back to folks in a reasonable amount of time. And, you know, that can be by text message or email, but certainly be responding to them and updating products. A lot of our brands have launched new products in the last six months that we haven't even put on our site. So I could do that quickly and have a lot of new offerings and then start putting in new SEO driven pages based on proven long tail keywords or updating our existing pages just to you know make them fresh and better. That would be like the easy low hanging fruit. Then would prioritize. So we recently got the biggest brand in our industry to agree to work with us that we can sell their products now. So I would bring them online, add their product pages, you know, optimize them for SEO, add them to our product review pages to start sending traffic to their product pages and really get them going. That's a huge and already set up opportunity for growth. Promote our own brand. We've got our own branded products as of this year. And so just do a better job of pushing those out, partnerships on those, social media on those, consider ads for those. I would do paid ads. We've never done paid ads before. We've been entirely SEO driven. And so would start to think about paid ads for growth. And then we have not really touched our 5,000 person email list in many, many months. So I would re-engage with that to start generating revenue there. Longer term, since we do have some of our own products, I'd think about an Amazon store since that's just another good marketplace to be in. I would think about expanding our own product line based on customer feedback we're getting. And all of this, not that complicated because we've already got all of the like work in play, you know, a long established website, good traffic, trusted name in the industry. And so it's just building on top of that with some pretty easy and straightforward things. Right. And what would you say are the biggest risks with this business that buyers should be aware of? The biggest risk is the fact that we're 100% SEO driven. We're a Shopify store that 100% of our traffic comes from SEO. You know, as AI continues to become more prominent in search, no one knows what search is going to look like in one year, two years, five years, 10 years. That's the risk. I think, you know, we've seen traffic continue to be pretty good despite those changes happening for the last two years. But I would gradually move toward diversifying how we're acquiring customers. So think about paid digital ads, think about using the email list, building out the social media presence, you know, getting in another marketplace besides Shopify like Amazon and then using Amazon SEO and potentially ads partnerships. There's influencers in this space who would love to work with us more. And so I'd just be trying to minimize the risk of being fully dependent on SEO by getting other avenues going as well. How much support are you willing to offer the buyer who acquires this business? I want to see the store succeed. So I will be helpful to the buyer. Given that we've got a 3PL fulfilling all of our stocked orders and then partnerships with brands that we're drop shipping from, it's pretty darn simple to run the store and a new owner will be able to get up to speed quickly. But 
you know, for the first month, I'm happy to help extensively to teach the new buyer everything I know. And then after that, I'm obviously available by text or email as questions come up. I want to make sure that the next person's successful because I love this store and I've worked hard on it for a year and a half now and want to make sure that it continues to do really well. Are you open to negotiating something like an earnout agreement? I'm looking to, you know, with what I just mentioned of obviously helping the new buyer for a month, I'm other ways looking to fully turn the reins over to someone new because I got the company I'm trying to build and I need to give it my full attention. So I'd have a strong preference for a deal that gets me fully out and everything fully sold so that I can focus my attention on the other business. But look, I'll consider all competitive offers that come through whatever the structure. So, you know, my preference is for everything up front, but open to hearing what people want to offer. Okay. Final question. If you had to put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why is your business a business worth buying? Look, if I didn't have a company that I'm really trying to pour all my time into right now, I would not be selling this. Or you know, if I didn't have either, I would be wanting to buy this because it really is a solid company. It's got great brand partnerships. It's got a long-term website with solid traffic. It's just primed for explosive growth. And I'm excited to find someone who's ready to do you know, not even that much work, but put in a little bit of work more than I'm currently able to put in to help it get there. So specific reasons that I think it's worth buying. The industry itself is fast growing. COVID really made it take off and it hasn't shown signs of slowing down Most of the brands in this space are doing really well, and we are partnered with all of them to do well beside them. On that note, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we just lined up the biggest brand in the industry. So we haven't been selling their products in the life of our store because we haven't had a partnership with them, but I was able to get them on board. And so now we can start selling their products right now. I just haven't had the time to set them up, but the new owner could do that on day one and then have the biggest brand in the industry on their site. We launched our own line of products earlier this year that have begun to sell, and those are you know much better margins. We know them much better. We're starting to build our brand, and it's super early days on that still, so a huge opportunity for a new owner to lean into that. We're nicely diversified in drop shipping and stocking, about 50% drop shipping with our brands and 50% stocking our own stuff and a few of our brands. And so, you know, that is a nice spread, not all drop shipping. We've never advertised exclusively SEO based. So great SEO to build from, but also a huge opportunity to get into some paid ads. We've got excellent reviews on all of our top selling products. We've got two dealers who are listing our products on their websites, dozens of affiliate that push people to the products on our site, and about a half dozen of them reliably bring us sales each year. We've got a 5,000 person email list that we have not touched in months. So a huge opportunity to lean back into that and really make the most of it. Opportunity to expand at Amazon here. I think it's just super primed for growth. It does not require being full-time in it. In fact, if you wanted to give it to a part-time person, you could do about an hour a week on it and really still grow it or, you know, 10 to 15 hours yourself or through that person. And that's all the work it would take to, I think, capitalize on all these opportunities and really have an awesome business leading into 2025. So I think it's a great buy and I'd be doing it myself if I weren't otherwise occupied. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this business is still for sale, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for this business listing number, which you can find in the video thumbnail and description. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll find everything you need to know about this business. So thanks for joining us. See you next time.